Drooby Doobie Movies, Judas Cinema Closet, JT the Talking Head, Teo the Terminurtle, Zedzilla Movies, Masters of Matinee, You don't really host many of these things. I'm sorry. Would you like to go? You go. Hold on. Let me no, think. No, no, no. no, no you're going to, you're going to go. Hold on. Let me sync. Audio sync. Go for it, Zed. This fucking guy. How's it going, everyone? I'm JT, the talking head. You're the audience. Welcome to Masters of Matinee. I'm with my wonderful compatriot and co-host zedzilla movies zed how are you today oh baby i'm not too bad not too bad could be worse for sure could be worse you know it's almost as if i didn't have any time to prepare a question <clears throat> and then sort of uh just uh thrown upon me after a three two one and you're live zed that kind of you know a little bit of stage fright but nonetheless i'm okay how about yourself wasn't exactly that the way that that played out, but uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, Zed, we don't have a yeah. game plan, so I just no. want to know what what have you been watching? What have, actually? Let's play this game. Let's play this game. It's the same game. We, oh, me and God. you, me and you haven't played this in a while, probably since your first ever episode on the show. Uh, and oh. that is uh, the same question that I ask every person when they come on for the first time to the show. Uh, what's the last movie? that you watched and on a scale of one to 10, if that movie is now your real life, how fucked are you? The last movie I watched would, uh, it would would fuck me pretty hard. I would think Uh, the last movie I watched was the 2020 reimagining of the invisible man. Oh, and I already don't know how I would handle if I could see the person in front of me trying to beat me up and take pictures of me while I'm sleeping in my bed. So I I don't think I would fare very well. I can't run. I can run that fast. Uh, Certainly not. Uh, Yeah. I, I think I'd be pretty damn screwed if, uh, if I had uh, landed myself within that situation, that scenario. Um, but it was a fantastic movie. I'm glad I'm not in that scenario. I am very, very happy to not be in that scenario. What about yourself? How screwed would you be? Uh, the last movie that I watched, I would be unbelievably screwed because you know this how, last movie that I watched. How come? How come? How come? What was the last movie you watched? Oh, Legally Blonde. Uh, that was that was Teo the Terminator. Um, oh, very good. I would also be screwed in Legally Blonde too. Don't ask me about Legally, Blonde, folks. I, 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 I don't know what's legally Wait, not. In Legally Blonde or Legally Blonde Two, Red, White, and Blonde, which one would you be screwed in? Uh, I would be Reese with Outer Spoon. That's right. oh, very. Oh no! Oh goodness! What was the last one you watched? Real quick, shout out to Teo for that joke. I totally stole that. Carl, call me Jamie Kennedy, y'all, because I'm stealing jokes up in here. Call me, call me Carlos Mencia, y'all, because I'm stealing jokes. Call me Amy. No, don't call me Amy Schumer. Don't fucking call me Amy Schumer. No. God damn it. Uh, last Too movie, far. the last movie that I watched was I'll Be Back, The Terminator. Uh. Absolutely <laughs> fucked. If I if I'm Sarah Connor, I'm fucked. If I am. If I'm uh, Reese, I'm fucked. If I'm Arnie, I'm still fucked. I can cause a lot of destruction first, but I'm still fucked because the T-1000 is yeah. is, is going to die. And every he's got to die in the Terminator movies. Come on, guys. But yeah, so I watched the Terminator. Uh, Zed and I had this discussion the other day <clears throat> about it. They got me because he watched T2. Uh, and he, for the first time, you watched. We're going to talk about that in a second. Time. We're going to talk about that in a second. But he okay. watched T2 for the very first time. You know, T2, greatest action movie ever made. Um, not arguable. Best action movie ever made. Uh, oh, that's such a beautiful slip for that. I love that copy of T2. Um, he watched that and we were talking about it. And he got me to want to watch Terminator 1. And I'm going to restart the franchise. I haven't got to yet. Like, I, I just watched the first one, but I haven't got to watch T2 again yet. Um, but yeah. I 
went back and rewatched it probably for the first time since I was maybe 15, 16. Oh, really? So, so probably over 10 years for sure. And what surprised me is how much of a departure T2 is from T1 because T1 is much more of a horror movie. Like sure. Arnold, Arnold is scary. And that the T1000 yeah. is terrifying. That scene at the end with the factory is fucking horrific. Like I would be shitting my fucking pants. So yeah, I'd be absolutely screwed if I, if my life was two was, was Terminator one. Um, Zed, how did it take you 25 years to see Terminator two? Well, first and foremost, I want to say it would be quite unfortunate to see my big ass time travel back completely naked. Imagine you're the bystanders who see me like enter, enter the world through lightning bolts. And you're <laughs> like, Oh, is it going to be Mr. Olympia? It, it's, it, it's Gilgamesh. Damn it. Oh Fucking, my God. <laughs> dude, the, the, the Terminators, that would be genius. They'd be like, all right, you're going to go back in time to kill Sarah Connor, but you do not go under any circumstances. Do not go to say, I need your clothes to anybody. You just stay <laughs> naked. She would drop dead of fear right then and there. The second she sees Zed walking up to her. <laughs> that is one naked. of the most crazy scenes in T2 is when Arnie arrives in the 80s or you know i think it's the 80s 90s and uh is it the 90s now okay 90s. and uh and i think it's 93 even maybe i'm not sure maybe that's the maybe that's the year that the world explodes or whatever i don't even remember now but when he first arrives and he he shows up at that biker joint that biker bar and he just goes through them like paper dolls it's incredible yeah. it's a great scene how has it taken me so long to see it that's a good question for a lot of people that watch movies. There's always going to be movies, plural, that are going to be surprising that you've never seen. And it it's just one of those, you know, time circumstances where I wanted to give the entire six movie series a go, a, a shot all in one go, but it just never came to fruition. And uh, I enjoyed the first one. And I was even telling JT here off mic, how when they were discussing being the terminator and and uh, john connor were discussing his father i had the audacity to audacity to say hey google who's john connor's father because i had no idea if i should know this person and google was like john connor played or you know uh, whatever his name is john or something connor played by yada 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 um the main protagonist of the original terminator now i have i had no recollection of that character whatsoever in that movie and he is <laughs> the main protagonist he is who was sent back to create john connor <laughs> and i had no recollection of it it's totally bizarre but yeah it's just it's just one of those circumstances where i tried and failed even before it was, it was like failure to entry. Like I watched the first one was like, Oh, that's good. What are we going to watch next? Uh, land of the Lost, starring Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Dude. The Terminator franchise. <sighs> Talk about a franchise that falls off, right? All those like eighties action movies. They're, you know, the, the ones that they franchise die hard, Rambo, First Blood, uh, the uh, fucking like anything with Jean Claude Van Damme. I mean, even though Van Damme never really had many franchises, just him in general. Yeah, Rocky. Guess, I guess it's a, Rocky. Well, Ro okay, Rocky's I think the exception though, because like with Rocky, Rocky comes back. Like Rocky and Rocky Two, I feel like are inseparable. You can't you can't oh. watch Rocky. And then not watch Rocky two and vice versa. You can't watch Rocky two really without watching Rocky one. Uh, the, the true sequel. Cause it, like Rocky one and two feel like one, one movie. Um, sure. Rocky three really does feel like the, the true sequel. And then Rocky four, of course, is another sequel. Um, 
I think we do kind of ignore Rocky five, although I'm not the, I'm not a detractor of Rocky five. I liked Paulie's robot. Um, have you never seen Rocky five? I think it's an interesting departure just because I like the, the street level fighting. Yeah. I think that's an interesting concept mm-hmm. that is unexplored. Do I think it was done to its, its, its highest capability? Of course not. But then you get a movie like Creed all these years later, or not even Creed, you get Rocky Balboa after that. Rocky Balboa, even though it doesn't have a great opponent, you have one of the best Stallone speeches of all time when he's telling his son, you know, it's, it, it, it's not how hard you can, you know, you know, be hit. It's how hard you can be hit, be hit and still stand back up or something of that nature. It's a very yeah. profound moment. And even all the stuff with Adrian, cause she's now passed. Rocky has a, a restaurant underneath her name. It's a very profound movie in a lot of ways. It's, it's the way back. And then you follow into Creed, which is one of Stallone's best performances. So I've not seen Rocky Balboa. Like, no, I have seen it, but I was, oh. I was a kid. Like I was like, I, I, I saw it when it came out. I remember I actually had a pirated disc of Rocky Balboa and it was a cam version where somebody took, <laughs> oh, took a camera. No. That's the only time I've ever seen it. I need to go back and rewatch the Rocky movies now. Um, But I, I remember a lot of people didn't like it when it came out. And now here we are all these years later and your the sentiment that you're making here is something that I'm hearing more often is it's like people are now kind of putting the respect on that movie. Um, oh, really? And yeah, like I, cause I remember when it came out, man, like all my friend group and stuff, cause we were Rocky wild, man. Like we, we loved, or- we love, especially Rocky three, Rocky three is my favorite personally. Um, Clubber Lang. Clubber baby. Lang. Dude, now. Mr. T is Clubber Lang is one of the best movie villains ever. It's like, especially of the eighties, it's like, yeah. it's like Bruce Willis in, um, which one, which one was he in? Cause he was, he was great in the Bruce Lee movie. Is it Fist of Fury that he was in or was it Enter the Dragon? Who? Not Bruce Willis. Shit. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. It was an Enter the Dragon. Yeah. Enter right? the Dragon. I think, I think it was Enter the Dragon and he was like the, the big opponent for, for Bruce Lee, right? He was like the. It's uh, no, I haven't seen enter the dragon. I haven't seen any of these. I have that Bruce Willis box set from criterion right there. I haven't seen any of these movies since I was a fucking kid. Okay. But, uh, I believe that's Kareem Abdul Jabbar, the basketball player. <laughs> Isn't that not who he fights in that movie? Cause it's, it's the dynamic of height. It's small, but mighty and big, but yet not really that fresh when it comes to freaky fighting skills. I don't remember. I just remember like the big fight between Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee. Yeah, but that's not Mr. T. That's Chuck Norris. Where do you think Mr. T pop pops into this? I didn't say Mr. T. I What'd was you say. <laughs> I was going over what I think are some of the greatest eighties movies villains. Mr. T is one of them in Rocky Three. Yes, but how did we get into Bruce? Because I was. <laughs> hey, oh. I was going over. I was going over who I think are some of the greatest '80s movies villains. The Why did you name a movie you've never seen? I have seen *Enter the Dragon*, but it was I. It was a very long time ago. The scene where Bruce Bruce Lee is fighting Chuck Norris stands out in my head a lot. Um, Doesn't like Bruce Lee grab like a fistful of chest hair? Like it's yeah, some crazy okay. shit they do yeah. in it. It's bonkers. But. Chug Norris in that movie, and then Clubber Lang in Rocky Three, uh, the T one thousand in Terminator One. Like these are all some of like the the oh Hans Gruber in Die Hard, of course, some of the greatest mm. movie villains ever. And I, I was saying all of that to put the point out of that's why I love Mister T as Clubber Lang so much because I hold him in that high regard of eighties movies villains. Like he's he's on my Mount Rushmore of eighties action movie villains. He's so fucking Hell good. Yeah. He's I love, I love, I love that your that your Mount Rushmore is your favorite, a movie you don't remember at all, and then that other guy. <laughs> have, have you ever seen changing subjects slightly? Have you ever seen? Um, did you know? First off, did you know that Mr. T is in the WWE Hall of Fame? Yeah. 
Have you ever seen his induction speech? I don't know. It's possible. What? Why? What? What? What did he? What did he say? It's the most awkward but hilarious shit ever. So later in life, Mister T became like he might have always been like this, but he became like a hyper Christian. Like oh, very cool. every aspect, like it was his identity. Every aspect of Mister T was was wrapped up in God. And there's not anything inherently wrong with that, but he, Mr. T who had a killer program with Hulk Hogan back in the day, back in the eighties, but that's all he ever did in WWE got inducted into W into the WWE hall of fame because of that program. and hasn't had hardly anything to do with the fed ever since gets inducted to the hall of fame. And these hall of fame speeches, sometimes they can go on pretty long, like, 10 oh, minutes and 10 minutes for a, yeah. for a speech is a long time. Mr. T, I so shit good. you not took 25 to 35 minutes reading out of a Bible preaching to a room full of WWE professional wrestlers and their yeah. colleagues and their family talking yeah. about his upbringing and how it relates to his mother and God. Hell Yeah. Hell yeah. He was played off because you know you know how at like award shows and stuff they they like if you're going too long they start to play the music. Yeah. So he got the music started five or six times on him. Finally, finally, you hear Kane's yeah. music pop, and Kane had to come and tell Mr. T essentially get the fuck off the stage. <laughs> And made Mr. T leave. Dude, it I, is the funniest shit ever. I wonder what the conversation was directly after he was escorted off the stage. Vince McMahon went to Mr. T and said, Oh yeah, that, that was that was great T. That was great. Uh, I'm really glad. So appreciative that you came here. Uh I can't wait to work with you again. Then Mr. T's like Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I pity the fool that didn't like that speech. I pity the fool that didn't like that speech. Mr. T walks away. Vince McMahon says, never let that asshole back in my building again. He's fired. <laughs> that's ex I guarantee you that's exactly what happened. Has Mr. T really never been in the ring? I feel like I've seen him no, no, show he, up for like an appearance. He was. He, I, I'm pretty sure he actually had a match with Hulk. Like, I think they, they legit... Rumble, maybe I don't. I, I don't know. I don't watch really old school wrestling. I don't watch wrestling that far back. But I do believe that he he did have a program. I think it was with Hulk and Andre, or it was either Hulk and Andre or Hulk and Savage. But I, I again, I can't remember. I don't watch retro wrestling like that. Um, sure. Any 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 knowledge of that? Like I I gained when I was a little kid watching WWE documentaries, like. <laughs> that I still have yeah. on my shelf because physical media forever. Um, those, those, you know, I don't want to have to pay six dollars a month for Peacock to watch those. Um, oh, certainly not. Why would you? But yeah, I think I'm pretty sure he did have an actual match. Like he, he actually got really involved in, in in WWE, and it was all in promotion. I'm pretty sure for Rocky Three because he was, you know, he was the big villain of Rocky Three, and Hulk yeah. played Thunderlips in the beginning of Rocky Three, which is yeah. my favorite scene from any Rocky movie. The, the, really? Yeah, when Rocky goes up to him, he's like, hey, "How about me and you go get a bowl of soup after this?" You know, and then Hulk's like. <laughs> like just picks him up and shit. It's just it's so funny, dude. It's 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 fucking great. I love that scene so much. It's the best entrance to like the best opening scene for a Rocky movie I think that ever has been. What's a really great wrestler cameo? Because I have mine. I have my favorite. Although I can't remember the character's name. Ooh. Big Show in Waterboy was fantastic. Like at the Silver Tornado or whatever Cap it was. Captain Encino. Yeah. Th what a fantastic character. Yeah. I adore that one. Do you have any other ones that you're like, I love that wrestler cameo? You know, what's funny is that all, all Elite Wrestling AEW actually owns the copyright and trademark for Captain Insano character. They own that. 
Tell me that Paul White is going to enter the ring one night as Captain Insano. It's fucking possible, and we've all been waiting for it because Paul White works for AEW. Yeah, like yeah. so, and like every like I think I don't know because like the game is kind of dead now, so I don't know if we're going to get this. But Paul White's in the AEW video game Fight Forever, um, and we're definitely expecting a Captain Insano costume at least, at the very least, a Captain Insano costume for for Paul White in in that game. That would be amazing. Yeah. What a waste of money if they don't do something with it. You listen to Tony uh, yeah, Khan? No. You listening? Yes. M- M- J- James Khan, or whatever your name is. Very good. <laughs> oh, God, though. Uh, favorite wrestler, Amio. Because you have, like, the the one I don't... I chew bubblegum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubblegum. That's not a cameo though. He's the star. Yeah. He's the star. star, So I'm like, I'm trying to think of like Mick Foley, not appearing in like a Kevin Smith movie somewhere. For some reason, the only person I can see appearing in a Kevin Smith movie is like Mick Foley. Uh, Probably more likely than not. Cause Jason and Muse is a big wrestling fan. Oh, see, there you go. Um, there you go. they've actually uh been Ke- Kevin and Jay have been like they were on like one of the first ever I think it was the very first ever episode of AEW Dynamite. They were like in what? the crowd front row and featured and they it was like holy shit that's fucking Jay and Silent Bob. Like at AEW. Were they in character? No, no. Why not? Why not? I don't that's like that. They weren't I don't think they were promoting anything at that time. Oh, so I, I think Kevin like, was wearing his pink salmon blazer. <laughs> oh yeah, which you know what that that's actually a really good progression in Kevin Smith post heart attack is going from the big old hockey jerseys to yeah the blazers. Yeah. I love that departure. It just may it, it gives him such a signature look from an already signature look it's 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 a it's a great uh it's it looks good on him and and kevin just looks good in general after all that nonsense which is nice i tell you one of my favorite wrestler cameos is actually another another big show cameo uh oh santa and jingle all the way he's uh what is it santa smackdown oh my god he is what was Paul was just kind of getting all the stuff back then. Yeah. I wonder if it's just from like pure size going from like uh like Andre the Giant, everyone wants the the next big giant. So they're like, all right, Paul, you're up. You're you're the is he isn't he like the wasn't he the quote unquote biggest athlete in the world or whatever? Or was that Mark Henry? Well, Mark Henry was billed as world's strongest man, and that was true. Uh, he actually yeah. did win a world strongest man competition. So I've got a list here of uh, cameos, wrestling cameos. Let's 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 go through some of these and see if if they spark any memories for us. Okay. okay. Um, have you ever seen Highlander Endgame from two thousand? No, I feel like that's a part of the Highlander series though of movies. So I I haven't seen any of those. Uh, it is part of the Highlander series. I've never seen it either. Uh, but Edge was in the Adam Copeland. Oh, okay. um, he's actually Percy Jackson's dad. I believe he, he's playing Poseidon in the Percy Jackson series. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. Uh, I Hulk, think so. Hulk Hogan was in Muppets from Space. Oh, yes. That's a great cameo. Oh my goodness gracious. Absolutely. That's that that's a Gonzo story of being a a something. Yeah. It doesn't know quite what he is, but he's a something. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. I love that. Uh this is a little bit older than I watch. Uh you probably don't know these guys either. I mean, I know them, but I don't I've never really watched them. Uh in the original Highlander movie, uh had a cameo by the Fabulous Freebirds, the High Flyers, and the Tonga Kid. What? Who are these people? Uh, Goldberg and Looney Tunes back in action. I would not have never recognized him when I was watching those movies. So I, I have to like rewatch it because I know what Goldberg looks like now. You ever seen McGruber? 
Yeah. Uh, Chris Jericho, MVP, The Great Khali, Kane, The Big Show, and Mark Henry all cameo in that movie. Is that the movie? Who's who stars in that movie? I don't know. I've never seen it. Isn't it Will Forte? I think it's Will Forte. I almost said Drillbit Taylor. That's Owen Wilson, but no, no. I think MacGruber is the SNL skit turned movie starring Will Forte. Yeah, it I looks think. like it looks like it looks like Will Forte. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I. Now that you said that, I don't think I've seen that movie. I think I was thinking of Drillbit Taylor. <laughs> I was like, hold on, let me think on that for a second. They came out but around yeah, the same time, I believe. Probably, yeah, probably. That was the very last movie, Drillbit Taylor, that uh, John Hughes wrote before he passed away. And really? uh, he, he wrote it under a pseudonym. Um, hmm. So when you look it up, it's like, you know, it's a writer's name he used. But he was, he was, he was, uh, I don't, what did he pass away from? I almost feel like he passed away of the same thing John Candy did, which was a heart attack. So, um, I don't know. which they were both like, they were both like very scared of heart attacks, if I'm not mistaken. So the fact that they both, because they were very good friends as well, John and John, uh, that they both just happened to succumb to that. Yeah, very sad, very sad. Um, moving on into something not very sad. Hulk Hogan oh, again. He was very, very movie. He was trying to go Hollywood for a long time. I mean, he, sure. he even had a character Hollywood, Hollywood. Hogan. Hogan. Yeah, uh, Gremlins two. Does he appear in that? Where does he appear in Gremlins 2? I must be forgetting. You know, I've never actually seen Gremlins 2. I've only ever seen the first one. So I don't That's know. very unfortunate. I don't hey, know. Man. Maybe he's in like a commercial. I just read the list. I'm just a list guy. Okay. That's fair enough. Um, we are embarrassing ourselves. We really haven't seen any of these movies. Uh, the Big Show in Waterboy. We knew called that. Yep. 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 Hogan and Rocky 3. Yep, yep, very good, very good. Okay, here's if Hogan in Rocky Three is not my favorite wrestler cameo, this one is, and that's Macho okay. Man Randy Savage in Spider Man Two Thousand. Oh my gosh, um, Hacksaw! Yeah, yeah, he was great. I got you for three minutes, three minutes of bleak time. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. I love Bone Saw. That's what his name was, Bone Saw. Yeah. Because they're, they're 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 putting against their arm and they're and they're yeah oh god what a great that's it's like fantastic fantastic cameo totally it's a total departure sort of like Big Show's character in Waterboy it's a total you know departure from his actual WWE character and he's fantastic and 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 he was in such great shape in 2002 still like he was in ridiculous shape in that in that scene. God, yeah, he's, he's I, I take it back. That, that, that's my favorite. Macho Man was on steroids. Oh, very cool! Really? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I wasn't there. I all, didn't know. All all those guys, all those guys were on the roids, man. All of them. He, Ew. all of them, man. No wonder, was... no, no, no wonder people are just uh, they're not really getting into these modern day wrestlers. They're just not roided out enough. That's that's okay. This is off movie topic. The, the inner wrestling fan, modern wrestling fan, got to come out in me. Um, there is, I doubt you know who Jim Cornette is. He was he was a commentator. Um, he he commentated a lot of like NWA, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, like really old eighty shit. He also used to work as a writer for WWE back in in the nineties. Oh, cool. um, Cornette has a podcast. And it is like, and he, this guy is like fire, a fire and brimstone preacher, but for pro wrestling, <laughs> like oh. he, he, he seems to hate everything about modern pro wrestling. And one of the oh, things no. that he and his fans are always like screaming about is like, like these guys aren't, they're not big enough. They're not buff enough. They're not they're You know, they don't have the muscles and all that. They're, they're complaining about their bodies and stuff so much. And I'm just like, they don't look like they did back in the eighties. Cause they're not on steroids. That's literally my argument for the whole thing is like the only way that you look like they looked back in the eighties and the nineties yeah. is unless that you dedicate your life to weightlifting and bodybuilding, which wrestlers don't have time to dedicate to that, that intense to get their bodies that way. The only oh. way 
that you get that body is if you were on roids, man. Like, yeah. A lot of folks seem to forget the fact that this is a traveling circus. Mm-hmm. And it's not just the shows that you watch on air yeah. three nights a week or two nights a week. They are touring all around the world constantly yep. putting on shows. And with that sort of schedule, your next you know location is is uncertain you don't know what kind of equipment the local gym's gonna have you don't know what their hours are you might get there at like three o'clock in the morning and have to t- quickly you know do a couple pumps to get to bed to make the you know 7 a.m rise time it, it's a lot like a hundred percent and when you when you you can see like a really great you know example of this with triple h who was huge stopped doing roids and then went to a a normal acceptable body for someone his age and of and of his stature and of you know how much time he's already been in the ring he became more of a a filled out person not a rip person and people complained about it people were like what's wrong with triple h and it's like he's no longer on steroids i, I don't even know if, if h was on on the roids uh that's all i remember there's a lot of photos i've seen at least i don't know either maybe i'm completely wrong but i've seen photos of the comparison h on roids and no longer on roids and it's like a big departure in how chiseled and how big he was i i I know the the transformation you're referring to but in the late 90s early 2000s he did get a little more not roidy um but uh the i'm wor- also worried about our about about our youtube pushing our shit out because of how many times we've mentioned steroids in this episode <laughs> we're a couple of bad boys um but no, i i don't know for sure but like around that time in the 90s there was a big steroid trial where the government was yeah. cracking down on professional sports and roid use and in those sports and Vince McMahon like went to fucking trial about that like he he got arrested and stuff and like had to stand trial about that and it was it was a fucking crazy time for wrestling um and that's like one of the things that like created the Vince McMahon character because it villainized him in the media and he had that brilliant fucking idea to be like, okay, well, I'm going to give these people what they want. I'm going to come out on WWE television and be Vincent Kennedy McMahon, you're fired. Join the Kiss My Ass Club and shit, shit like that. Like, he, he created VKM. So, honestly, <laughs> if there's one good thing that came from steroids, it was that character work. Maybe not, I guess all, so. maybe not all the hush money. <laughs> that, that no, he, yeah. Yeah, I, that that that's a that's a that's a really really big uh, topic within itself, wrestling. And I, I I would actually genuinely like to hear you do an entire episode just chatting about wrestling in some fashion or another, especially with a lot of wrestlers like Batista and like John Cena and even Edge Jumping branching to, out yeah. into no, more Hollywood. media. Yep. I think it's an interesting conversation. Uh, I used to run a podcast for professional wrestling. Called, oh. called Bumps and Brews, where me and my buddy Kevin, we would get drunk off a of beer. Shout out, Kev. And hence the brews. Uh, yeah. And, and we talk about wrestling, the bumps. And Very uh, good. it was, I mean, it was obviously a take on you know, bumps and bruises uh, and, and stuff, but we would just get hammered talk about wrestling our slogan was the the pro wrestling podcast for pro wrestling for for drunk pro wrestling fans by drunk pro wrestling fans amen to that you know that's what that's something that teo would support we got absolutely we got one episode done (laughs) and uploaded oh Oh. it's it's out there you can listen to it on spotify it is it is available on spotify uh and on anchor if anchor is still a thing um and on google podcasts 
Hold on. Yeah, let's uh let's try to keep them here for a little bit. Let's not try to send them away. Like we just got them here. Don't leave. Let just stay around for a little bit longer. Don't we'll go searching people. the dead podcast. Don't, don't do even it. don't even think about it. I'm we're done talking about it. It was a fun time though. It was a fun show. Uh Kevin and I always meant to go back and do it, but there was a bunch of personal issues that arose around the time of the show. Uh, a bunch of personal issues that uh, eventually led to me quitting drinking in general. So now if we did go back and do it, it would be uh, bumps and one guy drinks brews because I don't drink anymore. And then he beats the shit out of you. <laughs> likely, likely. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, that's my fault. That's my fault. Uh goodness gracious but yeah i i would i would dig doing a, a a wrestling i'll tell you what if this gets enough likes this gets enough likes i'll bring kevin on masters of matinee and we'll talk about wrestling movies you guys will get to meet kevin damn can we beat the shit out of kevin at the end of it yes kevin's kind of kevin if you're out there listening you're kind of a dick but i love you buddy oh kind of like kevin McAllister. i know a couple kevins that are assholes so do you inside jokes inside jokes uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so oh i am trying to watch more universal monster movies that i haven't yet and two of those were the invisible man 2020 and the wolf man starring benicio del toro and anthony hopkins emily blunt yada 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 uh the Invisible Man, I've held off on for such a long time now, purely out of fear. And it's due in large part to me being afraid I won't like them. It's why I held off on Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom for nearly two years after it was released, because I was too afraid to watch it because it was being panned. Even though The Invisible Man did really, really well, it was a lot of people's last movies before lockdown and i was just like what if i don't like it what if i because i love the invisible man so much i adore that movie but starring claude rains it's an incredible hg wells adaptation and i was afraid and now after watching it i'm beating myself up because i could have been a fan of this movie for nearly four years now like we're nearly at its four-year anniversary in march and I could have been, I could have been loving this movie because it was genuinely such a great time. And then the Wolfman, there's a lot of really great parts about the Wolfman, but there's equally just as many letdowns where you're like, oh, this could have been so much better, to be honest with you. And this was a take that I was having trouble with, but the more and more I watched it, I, I don't think that Benicio del Toro was a good Wolfman. I don't think that he was really fit to play Larry Talbot or Lawrence Talbot. Um, I just don't, he's supposed to play, he was supposed to play Quasimodo in a live action uh, hunchback in Notre Dame, but that was shelved due to a bunch of this person bought that this person's got these rights. Oh, we don't, there's a bunch of flip-flop stuff was changed around, but he was supposed to, I believe, even direct the movie at one point. Uh, and he really wishes he, like, that's one of his dream roles is to play that character. And I think that he'd be a better Quasimodo because his Lawrence Talbot was just fine. <laughs> like, it, it's been out for a long time. There's two Wolfmen in the movie, and the other one's played by Anthony Hopkins. That's a really, really good Wolfman. But he's older, so you don't really believe that he's the wolf man because when he does eventually transform, he's not really, it's not, I don't think that's Anthony Hopkins underneath all that fur. So I don't know, like there's just a lot of stuff that could have been really good. It doesn't too much spread into uh, potentially starting a, a new universe. A lot of folks try to say it. It, it, it it's one of those movies that, was like a failed restart of their cinematic universe, sort of like Van Helsing. The only thing about the Wolfman is at the very end of it, it sets up what came before the Wolfman originally, the original Lon Chaney Jr. Wolfman. There was a, a werewolf movie by Universal called 
Werewolf of London that did not do very well. That's essentially what the end of The Wolfman was setting up was Werewolf, or a Werewolf of, of Werewolf of London. I always get that mixed up with an American Werewolf in London, but uh, yeah, it's good to an extent. We've all seen the clip by now, I think, when uh, Benicio del Toro changes like for the first time really like changes in front of that group of doctors and that big auditorium and it's a really big it's really really cool but it is a lot of cgi and not really rick baker was the uh was the makeup guy on that on that uh on that film and he uh he also did the american werewolf in london uh, effects and although the costume and makeup looks good, the transformation was all done digitally. And it's it's okay, but it's no like it's no like transformation. Like you see in those movies where it's slowly being layered on the actor and they're lining them up and then go. <laughs> so I have a con I have a confession. Uh oh. <clears throat> uh I ha I have seen Wolfman twenty ten. Uh, but I haven't seen it since 2010 when it came out on DVD. Oh, um, I do remember. I do remember it. I also remember not liking it because I was such a big fan of the Lon Chaney Jr. one, and it was so different. Um, I've never seen The Invisible Man 2020, and I've never seen the original Claude Rames uh, Invisible Man. How come? How come? I just never, it was, it was one of those that never really like, as far as universal monsters go, my watching has, has mostly featured. I know I see, I have it on 4k. I just got it for Christmas. I got it in the, um, in the four pack 4k. Yeah. I love the, I love the wolf man. That's, that's my favorite. Uh, you guys can see back here. He's in my Luke's diner mug. To, uh, Tao the Terminator brought me back that Wolfman plushie from Universal Studios. Um, and uh, the I'm going to go watch Invisible Man soon because the other three movies that are in that Universal box set are Wolfman, seen it a million times, Dracula, seen it, Frankenstein, seen it, and Invisible Man. It's the only one that I haven't seen. It's the biggest reason that I asked for that box set because I own all the others on DVD and I wasn't like a like huge on like I need to upgrade these right the fuck now. But I was like, I want to see Invisible Man. I know that he's one of your favorites. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. So Hello. I I do want to see it. Um spoiler alert. We're going to do me and Zed here soon. We've talked about it. I need to watch more of these movies. We're going to do an episode on Universal Monsters coming in the future. I don't know when but it will be coming in the future. But, and, uh, yeah, I just, I need to watch more of the monster movies. I'm going to watch, rewatch, Let's watch the, what, what all's in that, the, what all's in that set? What, Dracula, Frankenstein, uh, the mummy, that would be the invisible man, the bride, the wolf man, phantom of the opera, which is the Claude Rains remake in color. And Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, the original no. Phantom of the Opera is, uh, is uh, a silent film starring Lon Chaney, the father of Lon Chaney Jr., who was the Wolfman. Uh, but a lot of people like to do the Claude Rains movie because it was a remake that was in color and sound. I just realized something. I fucked up. The Universal Monsters box set that I have does not have the Invisible Man in it. It has the mummy in it. So it, I was gonna ask you because I don't I know what the I know which one you have and the Invisible Man is not on the cover. Yeah, no, it's I got, think they I think they've always planned on doing a, a companion they did. to that one, but they never did. They, they did do it. They have volume two. It's got Invisible Man, Creature from the Lack Lagoon, Bride of Frankenstein, and Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. Okay. So I'm all not, these movies yeah. could be yours. Yeah. I just need to get Volume two. I, I probably won't be able to get volume two until this coming Black Friday because that's probably when it'll go on a decent enough sale because that those fucking sets are like a hundred bucks, Zed. 
Yeah. Gee, like, like they went on sale, like the volume one went on sale for like 30, a huge sale. Yeah. It usually does stay around 70, but it went on a huge sale for like 30, $35 over the holidays. And I got that for Christmas. My, my beautiful wife. Hi, Desi. Hi. She bought that for me for Christmas. Um, with, and it, it comes with Drac, Frank, Wolfie and, and, uh, and the mummy. And I haven't seen the mummy either, actually. So I will watch the mummy um, and I'll take a trip to Peacock to watch the rest. <laughs> so we can do our episode. Yeah. You gotta, I, I, I would love to discuss these movies. They're really short watches. They're really short yeah. watches. They're all like just and, a little uh, over an hour a piece, right? Yeah. I think, I mean, you might have ones that roll into an hour 20, you know, but they're, they're, they're fairly short watches. Um, and they're all so, so good in their own ways. Um, and 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 there and then 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 there's the other ones too, like Dracula Untold, Van Helsing. I've seen okay, I've seen some of the newer ones. I've seen some of the ones from the eighties and some of the newer ones from the nineties and the two thousands. I've seen obviously I've seen American Werewolf in London. That's my favorite Universal Monster movie. Um I've seen the Mummy with Brendan Fraser, uh all all three of them, plus the two Scorpion King movies they did. Um I've I've seen Dracula Untold. Dracula Untold, super fucking underrated. That was a great movie. I went to see that in theaters with my stepdad. That was such a cool movie. I need to rewatch it because I haven't seen it since its theatrical run. So I'm going to go get that as well uh, and watch that. Um, I've seen Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman, of course. I uh, grew up on that movie. That movie's so good, too. For those those really early fun. those early two thousand movies like about monsters like like the underworld movies the Resident Evil movies the ones that have that two thousands like sheen all over them like you can tell that it was like made during that transition period from film to digital like it's the end of film's life before everything really went digital and it's like but they're still shot on film and they but they look good with modern effect or like modern then effects like those movies are so fucking magic I love those movies. Van Helsing, I know you don't give a shit. Van Helsing just got a 4K recently, a few months ago. I need to get that for sure. What's a 4K? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, I actually have a 4K in my player right now. I haven't finished it yet, which is why I didn't discuss it, you know, as my most recent watch. But I am watching. There's a 4K in my player. Um, there's also just adaptations of these classics that i i love as well like i frankenstein um starring uh aaron eckhart is amazing i love that story so it's super super uh, interesting and weird and fun you also have uh, victor frankenstein starring uh daniel radcliffe as igor and uh james mcavoy as uh victor there are so many really cool movies out there that i love last year we got um renfield and the last voyage of the demeter yep. and then a frankenstein ad- those are both universal movies both renfield and the last voyage but then we had a frankenstein adaptation called the angry black girl and her monster that was awesome as well there is so much and then this year this year alone we're getting a bunch like not only are we getting movies going into production like the wolfman and the bride of frankenstein but we're also getting uh we're getting lisa frankenstein starring Catherine newton and abigail i saw your trailer reaction for abigail and you know me i don't watch trailers but i will watch a zedzilla trailer reaction on tiktok shout out to zed's tiktok channel um because when i watch zed's reactions to these trailers he gets me hype i'm not the kind of person that really gets hype about a trailer but you always like point out things about the trailer that i'm like oh that's a really cool detail that i would have fucking missed the first time i watched a trailer um i watched your reaction to abigail and i was like holy fucking shit this movie looks wild i am so down it will be a theatrical c for me for sure i'm so excited for that now did you stay tuned for my yes my theory yes uh, apparently i am correct <laughs> Ooh. we're not gonna we're apparently. not gonna say his theory here 
No. Uh, for two reasons. One, we don't spoil stuff on Masters or theorize about possible spoilers like that. But two, so if you do want to see it, go follow Zedzilla on TikTok, Zedzilla <laughs> Movies, and watch his trailer reaction to hear his theory that apparently is correct. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Apparently. I don't know for certain because I refuse to actually go out and find it. If I accidentally get spoiled to it, say la vie, but I'm not actively looking for it, but I've been told I am apparently right, which is cool, which is it, which is it how fucking cool. That movie is going to be a lot of fun, but there's other stuff like Maggie Gyllenhaal, the sister, the elder sister of uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is doing her Bride of Frankenstein movie. Dude, uh, such an underrated, such an underrated person right there. I, I've only ever seen, I mean, I've seen a few movies with her, but like the biggest movie that I've seen with her is Donnie Darko, where she starred alongside Jake. Have you ever seen Donnie yeah, Darko? Yeah, that's good. That's oh, yeah, such I have, a good yeah, movie. I've seen it. I've seen it. So, a yeah, it's a movie. It's a movie. I've watched it. And that's all the time we have. To, that's all. That's all the time we have, folks. If you enjoy this, oh, that's a good but, movie, man. But, but, but there's even stuff in monster movies that it, you know a little bit of change ups. Like, uh, for instance, Guillermo del Toro is directing a Frankenstein movie, which is starting his own monster movie franchise. Starting off with. Uh, the Shape of Water, which is his own adaptation of Creature from the Black Lagoon, and now he's doing his own Frankenstein, which was going to star Andrew Garfield as the monster, but he unfortunately had to drop out due to other projects. And he was just recently replaced by one of the main leads of Euphoria. I'm not really familiar with the guy's work at all, other than I know what he looks like. But then you even have, like... uh what's his what's his what's what blah, 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 what's it called what's it called what's it called brain farts happening oh my god it's happening uh oh ryan gosling is out as the wolfman oh man ryan gosling is gonna be blumhouse's wolfman to sort of be a part of this invisible man renfield sort of uh wave of movies and he has been announced for the better half of a year or two and it was recently announced at the either at the tail end of last year at the beginning of this year that he's out as the wolfman I thought he would have made a really great Talbot, especially with uh, he has just some of my favorite movies with Drive and uh, the other guys. And even recently with Barbie, Barbie. he's just such a fun person to watch. Barbie and fantastic. Uh, so it's unfortunate they did bring in another guy. He has been already replaced, but I would I would be uh, uh, I would. Uh, be lying if I said I remember his name. I don't. Uh, he was somebody. He was somebody I was unfamiliar with. Um, but there's a lot. Monsters are back, baby, and I'm so excited. I'm so so excited. Before we and go, if, oh my god, the new Godzilla is going to be Godzilla minus one, guys. Come on, fuck it. Zed hasn't seen a black and white. Really, it's getting a black and white. Yeah, it's getting a black and white version. Uh, me and Judy already said that when we watch them we're gonna watch them back to back color then black and white <laughs> the way to do it dude i went to see minus one in theaters i know you haven't seen it yet i think that yeah, i did happened? i explain that i got to see it in rpx yeah i'm looking over here now i'm just gonna you know, i'm not gonna spoil you. i'm not gonna spoil anything i know i know i know you did um, tell me and it it's, yeah it's, if you guys for a huge movie if you like when the new godzilla uh uh the new warner brothers godzilla movie comes out God, it's not Warner Brothers. I keep on telling you there's legendary pictures. Legendary pictures. Oh, yeah, but it's like, isn't it bankrolled? Isn't it produced by Warner Brothers? Uh, I mean, who knows these days? It's called Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. It's a legendary picture monster verse movie. It's going to be a lot of fun. You guys got to support it because we need a season two of Monarch Legacy. I need to I need to watch Monarch for sure. But if you can see this, if you can go to a Regal Theater and see this movie in the in the Regal Premium Premium Experience or no Screen X, it's called Screen X, um, where they have the screens on the side, dude. Seeing a Godzilla movie in a two hundred and seventy degree viewing angle is fucking incredible. Go go watch that. Before we go, Zed, going back to the Universal Monsters real quick. We we're gonna we're gonna talk about this briefly and then we're gonna wrap up. What are some of your favorite retellings of these Universal Monster movies? I have two in mind, but I want to hear from you first. 
some of my favorite retellings. Hmm. Oh, that's, I mean, I think I named a lot of them. I, I, you did. I really love. What did you do that for? I, I was scratching oh. my note, my face. Um, oh, I, th- I just looked like you flipped me off for a quick second. <laughs> um, I would say, uh, Frankenweenie is one of the greatest, uh, all encompassing because it really shares uh, love across the entire Universal Monster platform or platform franchise. And it also pays homage to other things like the Creature from the Black Lagoon creatures are also gremlins. So they share a cop, they share like a thing where uh, they are still creatures of the water, but they are sea monkeys that when they get introduced to water, they become <clears throat> giant monsters or like whatever. And then instead of Godzilla, it's that giant like Gamora, Gamora uh, kind of thing. It's, it's a turtle that then becomes a giant Godzilla like monster. So they share certain uh, monster relatives while also paying homage to Frankenweenie being a uh, Sparky is the character's name, but the dog is Frankenstein. And then uh, the neighbor's dog is the bride and then one kid's hamster is the mummy and so on and so forth it's a lot of fun so that's another really big one that i i adore and um even you know what oh that's not that's an original i was about to i was gonna say i was gonna call out werewolf of london that's a that's a that's a fun one because it's about a botanist who comes across the lycanthrope, like the, uh, not lycanthrope, it's uh, the flower. I can't remember what it's called, but there's Wolf, a surrey Wolf's like Bane. Wolf's Bane. And uh, there's this flower that, that interacts with the moon and, 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 you know, it cycles, you know, once it hits a full moon, it, it's a fun one. But when it comes to uh, monster, like the, the adaptations, I would say that I love um stuff like frankenweenie i love dracula untold i love uh hotel transylvania there's a bunch of really great modern interpretations of these monster movies what about you so the my two favorite re reinterpretations reimaginings if you will i i feel like i know one of them take a guess monster squad oh I've actually never seen Monster Squad. One. Monster Squad is so Monster Squad has the greatest creature from the Black Lagoon, Gilman, that I've ever seen. That Gilman looks incredible. The other monsters, like the Wolfman, looks a bit goofy. Dracula just looks like the dude walking around Universal Studios. <laughs> but there's something special about that Gilman. Mwah. Oh, monsters. Fuck. Monsters is and is, Adam's is one of course. is kind of a little bit adjacent, but the yeah. monsters are literally a werewolf, a vampire, and yeah. So a, I'm I'm strictly like talking monster. movies, but if we're okay. including TV shows, Monsters is my all time favorite. I I love the Monsters IP so dearly. Um, but strictly talking movies, real quick, uh, honorable mention shout out to Hotel Transylvania. Yeah. <laughs> Such good fucking underrated under even for four sequels or three sequels, four movies still They're underrated. Great. They don't get the flowers They're they fun. deserve. Some of Adam's fan, Adam Sandler's best modern work is in voice acting in Hotel Transylvania and playing Dracula. That is, you know, I will die on that hill. Um, but my two favorite reimaginings are actually both reimaginings of Frankenstein. The first Mel Brooks, Gene Wilder, Young Frankenstein. Oh, Young Frankenstein. That's another one of mine. That is that transcends the theming of of Universal Monsters for me. That is one of my favorite films of all time. I think it's Mel Brooks' best movie, hands down. It's better than Blazing Saddles. It's better than Spaceballs. It's better than History of the World Part One or Two. It's such a good movie. I agree. It's honestly a five out of five. I don't think that movie does anything wrong because of every homage that it pays to the universal monster verse, as well no. as the writing and the comedic delivery of Gene Wilder and all of his surrounding cast. And uh, what's his name as the monster? He played the dad and everybody loves Raymond. 
Um, I know. I, I'm standing here trying to remember his name as well, but it's escaping me. Is it Peter O'Toole? Is that it? Hold on. I don't think so. I don't, I don't know if that's, that. I mean, that, that name sounds familiar, but not for that character, not for that actor. I think it's like, oh, something. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. No, not, oh, but it is a Peter. It's Peter Boyle. Peter Boyle. Okay, okay, okay. Peter Boyle is the monster is one of my favorite uh, renditions of the monster. I, I love Young Frankenstein. And number two is one you may not have seen, and it's May. Oh, have you seen May? No, what's that? Um, I'm going to show. I'm going to look up the cover art for it. Um, because it's a very iconic cover art, showing showing the audience first, and Zed over. Over, othered way. Uh no. So, May is this crazy movie about a lonely girl who has a lazy eye, and like the slogan, the tagline is, "If you can't find friends, make one." And it's oh, it's a no. serial killer movie. You probably wouldn't like it because it's very gory. Um, but it's like a serial killer movie. And she makes a monster. She she is essentially Doctor Frankenstein. It's it's yeah. a it's not a direct retelling of the story, but it is a spiritual retelling in the same along the same lines of of the Frankenstein story by Mary Shelley. It's one of my favorite reimaginings. It's so original and so unique. Um, what's that one that you mentioned before the other the Frankenstein? Um, a girl and her monster or whatever. Oh, an angry black girl. Angry. And her monster. Yeah. It, when I saw the trailer for that, it, cause I haven't seen it yet, but it kind of reminded me of a little bit. And what's really cool about the angry black girl and her monster is that it ties in other universal monsters, other classic monsters in a very tasteful way. The main leads of the movie are all African-American and being that the mummy is another really big universal monster project Egypt is in you guessed it Africa the African god Imhotep Imhotep who is like one of the gods of the afterlife and whatever is the main character that's who Boris Karloff plays in the mummy is Imhotep and they mention Imhotep in the movie um as a part of her research about cuz essentially what the main character Victoria uh thinks is that death is a disease that can be cured and that's the sort of basis of it all so she has plenty of different studyings and i believe you know even at one point she's looking at um like botany books and wolfsbane is talked about it's pretty cool like there there's subtle little hints of other stuff not that they're trying to build out in any direction they're just paying homage to the movies that inspired them nice well, yeah. I will definitely check that one out, and you should go check out May. I think that you would like the story, but I hate but hate the gore. I don't know, man. I just from seeing the cover of that, you're like, this is so iconic. That gives me nightmares. That was a movie, and I put, I have a review of this on my YouTube channel. Um, that was a movie that uh I saw the cover art of going to the video store. Group. Um. It was I'm sorry. plastered all over the video store, and I always wanted to rent it, but it was rated R, and I couldn't. Yeah. Um, but so, and then Second Sight, going back to stuff that Zed doesn't give a shit about, uh, Second Sight Films in the UK has released an amazing Blu-ray box set of, of that movie. Um, you guys should absolutely go check it out online. It's a freaking amazing movie. All right, Zed, put the movie down so, so we can do our outro. Oh. Oh, very good, very good, very good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to the incoherent rambles of the disenfranchised Masters of Matinee. We love and appreciate you very much. Say good night, Zed. Good night, Zed. Mm.
now for something completely different. Masters. 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 The Mabinade. Masters of Mabinade. Starting. Trippies, Dippies, Movies. Judas Cinema Closet. JT the Talking Head. Taylor the Terminator. And Zetsu of Movies. Masters of Madden. Mike check, Mike check, check, Mike, Zed Mike check. Hey folks, I'm Zed, and I never drive with a DUI, but I do drive with a UTI. <laughs> <laughs>